So as we're running a bit late, I'm going to introduce our next speaker, who most of you know. Um, I had a long, you know, presentation thing to, like I did for everyone, but he's given me strict instructions just to introduce him as um, Dr. Jose Luis Pairo, who is the president of the FCM and also the president of the FCI Americas and Caribbean section. Sí. Damos la más cordial bienvenida al doctor José Luis Pairo, presidente de la Federación Canófila Mexicana y de la sección de las Américas y el Caribe. ¿Qué tal? Muy buenas tardes. Hello, how is it going? What I will tell you about is the experience we have here at the Federation. Just like you saw on this first day of the Congress, we've had experts who I imagine truly have stirred something into you, something important. Because we all see that our dogs, we want to look after their health. Health is so important and breeders play such an important role. And the kennel clubs have a massive responsibility. What I will present to you right now is a proposal, a proposal we are taking to the FCI to see if you agree, if we could use it for the future. We are doing that here in Mexico and we've been doing so for almost a year. However, the pandemic struck and two years weren't enough to promote it. But let me tell you something, a part of what we are doing, and I would like for you to take a look at it just to see if you're interested or not. Of course, you can have it in your Kennet Clubs if you're interested. Once the FCI, the, the board of FCI accepts this situation, let's make the first transparency, genetic pedigree. We all know a pedigree when we see one. And this morning, the president of FCI, Thomas Jackal, Thomas Jackal, said something very interesting. I was listening to him, and he said, pedigree does not guarantee the quality of a specimen. And he is absolutely right. Pedigree only tells us about the family, the bloodline, the parents, grandparents, the titles they won, the confirmation and whatnot. So, I will make it obvious for you what we know, what it means, what we know so far. And so far, what do we know? When we want our bloodlines to know each other and to have our apex, which is registered by Yves Leclerc at FCI, I gave my breeding center a name, and my name will identify the bloodlines. So once I have the name of the breeding center approved by FCI, all of my dogs will have that name. And people will know our breeders, our buyers, our friends, are just the lovers of these bloodlines, they will know that this breeding center belongs to a certain person and if they have a good if they have good fame because of the good quality of specimens produced, will be in this case. We also know about titles. We have more and more titles every day. Obedient obedience, agility, sports Schutzhund, Schutzhund, which it gets a different name every time, IPO. I mean, there are just so many titles that people want to have with their dogs. And those who like working dogs, they do not necessarily want to know about a confirmation title. But there are others who take the dog to all the countries and each and every one of us 
give them the title of a Mexican champion, world champion, champion of the Americas, thousands of titles, yes. But these champion titles, the only thing they tell us is that the dogs of the pedigree have good confirmation. Why? Because a number of judges looked at them. And these judges saw the certificates and they got the title of world champion or international champion and the FCI certifies it and senses the title. We give them the title, they add it on their pedigree and it's as simple, it is as simple as that. But the only thing this pedigree tells us is that they have good confirmation. have obedience when a dog gets the title of obedient for example the police is very interested in knowing that the dog has obedience titles Por qué? so Porque dice because que el they perro say the dog intelligence. has intelligence now there is a there is a heated discussion dogs being intelligent or not they say that the only ones capable of reasoning are human beings and not dogs dogs have the capacity to learn because if we if we lock one dog over on this room they will not break the dog but find another exit but we might break the dog we might use a ladder and whatnot so they gave us examples but at the end of the day we consider our dogs to be intelligent. They have learning capacity. This is what the obedience title tells us. Then we have protection titles. That the dog is capable of protecting me, protecting the police, protecting the army, of protecting a household, children, protecting the elder, the sick, or the ill, or, or those suffering from disabilities, looking after them. This is what pedigree tells us. Temperament is the character of each dog. Many countries carry out behavior temperament tests. English and IT, TP in English, and we test them and give them a temperament title so that they enter a ring, compete, and we know that the, the dog has a nice character, is not too shy, not aggressive, etc. And then for agility, agility is in trend now. There is, a, there is a massive amount of dogs competing for agility. This is a completely different sport. However, the dog has certain skills. They can enter a tunnel, they can climb up a ladder, doing it quickly or at a certain pace and they put to show the abilities or skills the dog has. This is what pedigree is useful for. Sometimes they say pedigree is where it's useful for nothing. Yes, it is. This is what the pedigree tells you. Then we have work tests. FCI demands certain FCI uh, certain work tests in certain countries. Currently, hunting tests present problems because dogs can no longer hunt. We have to do it with a hoax and the dog has the ability to show all the tests from FCI. Have described in their website just like everywhere else. Anyone can show up and find that this is what it says. But let's have a look and, and see a moment ago. Let's have a 
the speakers. I think it was Rossi. Cross breeding has a lot to do and mention something we will say. Let's have a look at the next. see DNA test. It also said something we didn't get the chance to use. Laboratory tests. That is true when I studied veterinary medicine. I was never taught a, a test to do a blood, urine, excrement test. Which have changed with us. They come and take DNA tests for several reasons. Because organizations of German shepherds around the world ask for only dysplasia of the coxofemoral articulation, elbow dysplasia, but German shepherds in their genes have around 12 different illnesses that are not easily detected, but can be detected with a DNA test. It is sent to Wisdom Panel or the American Kennel Club now, which is onto this now. And you can determine what are the, the hereditary diseases of your breed. It varies, some 10, some 12, 13, maybe 5. It is not the same for all of them, but these will help with hereditary diseases. And I will explain to you why. That's great, yes, but it will also tell me three things. One, the DNA. The DNA will give me the identity of the dog. That is number one, and a very important one. It, can I get rid of the microchip? I can because I have the DNA. This is the identification. But can it also tell me the paternity, the, the parenthood, to know whether the parents are actually the parents? As a matter of fact, father and mother gives me two and now it gives me three the hereditary diseases we offer it at half the price that it costs us with wisdom panel and we have over a thousand dogs which have taken it here and we put it in their pedigree we will talk about this part of the pedigree let me just have a sip of water But it is also presenting me with other situations we haven't discussed this far. But most likely tomorrow we will we will hear many, many, many interesting things. But it also tells us about the color. There are certain breeds such as Labradors, Retrievers, which have the great need to know the color. Or some other breeds, such as the Great Dane. The, the, the number of breeds per color. For this, also the DNA DNA tests will will say, you do you know what I taught you before? This is what we have. But look at what you can have from today with all of this. With a test. A saliva test. They just scratch a bit of the lip. And they send the swab and we get the results and it is added to the pedigree. But I will tell you more about it in a second. Then we have that the sizes. How many how often do we have problems with sizes? What's the what's the size of a Datsun? You need to change it or lower it or increase it because it changes. The Charlotte Squinklet, which is miniature, which is medium size, and which is the large one. Right, we have these problems, of course. I will see it from upon registration. I will know what size the dog is the fur, long, short fur, hard, soft, hairless, maybe. This is something that DNA will tell us. Now, we also have we are adding, you will see at the pedigree you were given there that. Back, we 
we make a radiography of the mouth, which is very important. There are some dogs that have very poor occlusion and sometimes it is hard to notice during shows. And at the Federation, we take a radiography almost for free and we say, listen, if the dog has a good bite and it varies, remember there are three different types of bites. The scissor bite, the twitch bite, or prominent, and the rest can vary. It has a good bite. Yes, it's there. And we say 42 pieces of teeth. The Doberman, the Rottweiler, all the Belgian Shepherds, all of them need it. And this is so easy and quite convenient for you, actually. What should we do with these dogs now? Well, for German Shepherds, we have to check dog by dog. If we will give him a, certifi a certificate that says the right bite and the right number of teeth, they will have the certificate, go to the show, present it, and then he wouldn't have to have his mouth checked. We waste less time. Just imagine checking the mouths of 300 dogs, one by one. All right? And then, of course, it tells us what Claudio just said earlier. The bloodline breeding. Which can give us a, which can be given to us by a DNA test. We are making sure the FSI accepts it, but as we as they say, they cannot demand everyone to do it. This is a personal choice from a country or from a person. We we will see, but just look at how many things you can achieve you can achieve with just one little sample. This is already a conversation with those who are here, Elodie and Mark, on what could happen. Let's, let's have the next part here. Here we have one of our own pedigrees. You see the front and the back. Can you show the front, please, just a little bit? right thank you you can see over there it says DNA it has an empty line well you will see why I told you that the DNA DNA tests can have up to 150 diseases and since this pedigree is for all breeds it is important for each breed to take a test in order to add it to the pedigree. So we came up with the following. Not only do we have the DNA test here, but also it has the size, the color, the fur, and everything else we just looked at. So we can use it already from here. And now when we fill all of this, of course, this won't happen overnight. It will take some time because we need to take a dog that is the offspring of this one here and these are the grandpas. This is the third generation. When we have all the numbers here, can, can you show please the, the back of the pedigree? Ours. We did this in this fashion because that's all right there, please. Here at the top, you have the data of the owner, the contact info of the owner, and the instructions of what they need to do to transfer. This is what I was telling you about the mouth, and this is the result. The right bite, 42 pieces of teeth. We add the signature of the FCM and the seal of the FCM. We give them a certificate and sorted. 
there are dogs that when they get to work, they they might lose a tooth. But if they lost it, but they had it before, we give them the certificate. There is no problem. Can you increase it a little? Then can you scroll up a little? Previous one. Thank you. That's all right. The genetical component. have the breed crossing that has the mutation. If the dog is affected, is crossbred with a with an unaffected bitch and half of the litter will be free from it, but the other half will be affected. This we shouldn't be using this for the following generations. This is helping the the breeder know before even choosing the right cross whether or not they want to do it. Okay, so we have this dog over here that has these these examples. Since the pedigree cannot have thousands of things there, what we do is we add a QR code. You enter the QR code and you will see an explanation of the whole genetics, the whole genetic cross of what they can, can and cannot get from it. So that the breeder decides. Nobody will tell them what to do, but they will decide what they can do. All right? Okay, can you scroll up a bit? That's all right. Here we have the main hereditary diseases. These hereditary diseases have a number here. And this is the number of the disease. If you tap on the QR code, you will find the description of each of the diseases. A full description. So that the breeder or the owner of the dog can have a read and not just be based on the pedigree because it would be a massive piece of paper. Everything is well described in here. Now, please, let's go back to, you've already seen the, the numbers here and it has a number. Let's say it is the 12 diseases of the German Shepherd. And here we see the numbers. Can we go back to the, to the other part, please? the front of the front part of the pedigree I mean that's right the DNA test has all of this free so we exclusively add the diseases they are free from wants to have the, the diseases they are affected by and they will not show it upon sale upon sale what can we do because we cannot lie we add in this part the numbers of the the number of the diseases they are free from and each of them has their own each dog has a DNA good to go but we give them a certificate and we say your dog has these these and those problems and this certificate this document is just for the breather and the breather knows that the dog has this you will know if you crossbreed it or not that is your problem we are just telling you this is your dog is free from this this is not it is not free from all that but people want to know people like knowing that their dogs are free from diseases just to show their pedigree but what we do is give them a certificate when we some panel senses a certification of the dogs free from diseases draft the document and hand in a certificate on behalf of the feline federation saying that they are Exempt from diseases. 
this is what we do now with great results so far. Once again, this is just a proposal. We gave you a quick test to see if in the future you know everything that is new. You need to see what to decide. We wait for the FCI to see what they what they decide, and hopefully this will come to fruition. But did you realize everything a pedigree can include now beyond just the confirmation and the title, but the color, the fur, the size? identification, temperament, I mean, thousands of things. So I urge you to use it in your own countries as well so that you can help us make it happen. This is it from me. Thank you so much. And please remember to keep your translation devices with you. You will be using it the, later on. Please remember to keep your translation devices with you. Are there any questions about Dr. Pyra's presentation, Alfredo? Doctor, thank you very much for your talk. It was very interesting. I have a very quick question. At what age, since they are a puppy, from the moment they are puppies, the moment you register it, we conduct the analysis, the, do the test, and send it to Wisdom Panel, you will get it back to you immediately via email. So it doesn't take long. You can just give it immediately to your breeders and there is no problem. Before moving on, we have something important. There is someone raising their hand who left the, the backpack at the, out there and they have the translation device in there. So please, Help us know if you took it by mistake. There was a, a backpack lying on the ground, but I don't know if it's his. Let me see. Apologies, translation cannot be performed if a person is not using a microphone. Anyone can do it. have a veterinarian here we have several people helping us they make an appointment bring the litter we run the test and send it immediately inspectors yes we have to show it I want to explain something quickly here the canine federation operates in a way that just just like the doctor said we have 200 inspectors all across the country they are veterinarians we certify them, we see that they come here, we give them a course, certify them, and in their own clinics, they need to be well set up, comply with the regulations we demand, and they can register the dog, send the registration, or they can just do artificial insemination and whatnot. They can do that. Now, I forgot to tell you that what we spoke thus far is for a breeder. But what do you know? We have more veterinarians now who are bringing samples from their clients, from dogs that do not even have a proper breed, to run the tests because they have discovered there are diseases that have certain characteristics, clinic connect, clinical connect characteristics that they can not, in which they cannot know what the problem is. When we do this from the clinical point of view, physicians, veterinarians can use it for diagnosis as well. And they can use it in their clinics, just like they use lab tests and the whole technique behind it with the x-rays and the, and the T T TAC machine. We are charging half of the cost with Wisdom Panel. We're, we're literally charging half. We are charging a thousand pesos, all right? 
Wisdom panel is charging around 2,000 pesos, yes. So we are literally splitting it in half. Why? Because we are attempting for breeders to get used to it, to have it there, and this is not our loss. It is helping others use it. And I think that if we spoke to those who will be doing it, such as American Kennet Club or Wisdom Panel, we can achieve a great, great prize if everyone will be doing it. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. This is Alex Cardo. I breed Hus Siberian Husky. First of all, congratulations, because this is such an innovative idea, excellent for animal welfare. But at the future, will this test help us define a judgment based not just on just see the confirmation of the dog, but actually take a look at the health of the dog and see that it is well conformed. Now, the, the show is a completely different event. It is a selection event, and selection is phenotypical, not genotypical. And what you're on about is genes. Genes cannot be appreciated by the judge. That is why we don't need an expert on the test to do it. But at the show, they won't, it, won't, it won't take away anything from it. Right now, everything is optional. Anyone who wishes to do it, this isn't compulsory. It is optional. Optional for anyone to do it according to the results they see. But let me tell you that people are usually very happy about it. And you with the Charlotte, we, I think we are getting it right. There is another question somewhere. The denture is, is a different thing. We only have one veterinarian who is an odontologist as well, takes a look at the mouth, takes a plate, and gives you the certificate. When they have a full mouth after a year. When they have all the permanent teeth. Congratulations on the project. Congratulations on your project. I wish the best of success. It is so important for everyone in dog breeding. I would like to know if the breeder has other tests from other generations, for example. Tests with Itzagi certification. We have this information of a pedigree. There's one thing here. We have been doing it for over a year. And we have only done it with the dogs brought to us. We put it there at the database of the Canine Federation, where it says where, where it says which DNA it is. But we don't, we do not have from their parents or grandparents. We don't have anything from them. And I don't think we will be able to have them because when they detected the, the hereditary diseases, this. This was quite new. This didn't exist. I mean, nobody can have it. I want to thank the FCI board members for giving Mexico the opportunity of having this important World Congress for Welfare and Health for the dogs worldwide. We are really pleased and thank you so much for giving us this great opportunity. And also I want to thank all the speakers from all over the world who participate in this great event. Thank you.